Welcome everyone. Today we'll be covering script canvas and Lua scripts using procedural generation with the Open 3D engine. These are some of the examples that you'll be able to do if you follow the previous tutorial and this one. So to start, create a new entity called procedural generation. You then press the entity and create two new components, a Lua script and a script canvas. We already have everything created, but we will guide you through all of the steps that you need. By the end of the tutorial, this is what you will have. Now notice the buttons to create or open the scripts in both the components, one for each. We'll start by opening the canvas editor first. Create and save immediately a file. As you write your algorithms in script canvas, you're going to notice that they're going to grow in size very quickly. It's also harder to document and visualize them. Because of this, with the script canvas, we're going to keep it very simple and the example smaller than the one from the, the Lua. So I'll cover only the very basics of script canvas. The right side is the variable manager and allows you to create local or from the component variables. Once you create them, you can drag and drop them into the canvas. Don't create any variable yet, you create them as you need them. Every time you have a node that you need to assign a variable, you can double click it and do convert into a list of variables that you have available. Regarding the procedural generation, the, the ticket is only created once uh, and only once. Otherwise, the engine might crash. And uh, the while loops, you need a specific variable in order to make them. The only missing thing that you need to know is how to add the nodes. You have the left side where you can search those nodes. In this case, the, the game entity, for example, and you drag and drop. You can also add them right-clicking on the canvas and add it one by one. To start with the logic, you are going to add two nodes, an if node and the create spawn ticket node. You then create three variables, a boolean, a spawnable script asset ref, and the new entity spawn ticket. When you need to assign the variables, remember, double-click it and the list of variables will pop up. So in this case, you will be assigning the asset ref and the spawn ticket. Second part, you will have two new nodes, a while and a greater than. You need to assign again the variables, so you need to double click it. Also notice that you need to wire everything properly so that the logic is sequential. The while will then have a loop, and every time that the x dimension is higher than zero, you will continue to spawn prefabs. If it is false, it will set the stay on loop to false, and it will stop the loop. In order to set the x stay on loop, you create a new variable called with that name, and you drag and drop. In this case, we were dragging the, the i stay on loop, but you should drag the X stay on loop. Next, we have another variable, a transform variable called X auxiliary transform. Right click the, that new variable, old, and drag to the canvas. Once you drop, you should get auxiliary transform. Next, you create the new nodes, spawn, subtract, and print. The print is optional. The spawn is the one that will need the ticket uh, as an input and as an output. The subtract will, every time you spawn a prefab, you are going to decrease the x dimension by one. You need to save it by setting the x dimension minus one. Then print it. Again, the print is optional. This time you right click again the X transform, you do not need to create create it again because it already exists. 
you have a new node called add, then a set x for a vector tree, another add, and uh, from translation. Notice that you need to create two variables, spacing of cubes and size of cube. Then you connect all of the wires properly. Notice that the translation is connecting twice, one to the set and the other one to the second head. Once you set the transform, you get a print. Logic consists in getting the transform, adding a spacing of cubes plus the size of the cube, and then make it the transform ready for the next iteration. In the script canvas, the logic is somewhat harder to explain. Uh, with, the, with the Lua script, it's somewhat simpler. You then save everything, set spacing to 0.1, x dimension to 10, size of the queue to 1, and start procedural generation to true. Then you can run the engine. Do not add further logic until you get these basics working and take your time because script canvas can get quite complicated pretty fast and it's very difficult to explain in ev even to your colleagues uh, your logic. Now let us now review a larger example but this time with using a Lua script which in my opinion it's uh, a better approach especially for teams. You can now open the Lua script editor and create and save a new Lua script file. You can use the default Lua editor from the Open3D engine or any other IDE you have available. I'll use Visual Studio with Babe Lua extension. You just need to install it, go to Manage Extensions and install Babe Lua. That will give you the very basics of uh, editing a Lua file. So you start by creating the variable that will be exposed to the engine editor or the component. You need a size of cube, a spacing of cubes, a next dimension, and y dimension, a z dimension, generate is on, an entity ID, and the prefab. You only need two more methods, onActivate and a custom method called start procedural generation. The first one is only printing the, to the console if the variables are not nil and calling the second function at the end of the, of the onActivate. So the first method is like a pre-check to see if everything is working by printing everything. The second method, which is the one that triggers at the end of the first one, We'll call the necessary properties and cycle through X, Y, and Z to spawn the prefabs. This code is not documented yet, but you can find it on GitHub tests. So I get all of the local properties, then I initiate the spawnable mediator and a ticket. Notice that the ticket is only created once and only once. Then the first position is a vector 0, 0, 0. The spacing will be 0 0.1 from the above and the rotation is 0, 0, 0. You set three cycles, one for X and Y and Z. Then you create a new spawnable. Once you create that first spawnable, you are going to add one Z position plus the spacing. Once that four ends, you are going to pass to the Y cycle. You're going to do the same. You're going to sum plus one and sum one spacing. And you're going to reset the Z so they don't overlap. When the Y ends, you do the same for the X, plus 1, plus spacing, and you reset the Y. When you end the X, you don't need to reset X because you're not doing it again, unless you want to. And at the very end, you execute this final line. At the end of the Lua file, don't forget the return. and save everything. Make sure your script files have no errors and you have assigned your script files properly to the components in the game engine editor. Otherwise, it will not be recognizing. The game editor will not be able to communicate with the script.
Again, take your time, fix your errors, don't overcomplicate your first methods right out of the bat, otherwise it will only complicate your life. Since we have turned on physics and collision in the prefabs, if they spawn on top of one another, prefabs will repel each other in different directions. If your character has physics and collision too, all prefabs will recognize the collision. You can also increase the spacing between the cubes and let gravity do its thing. Or you can do the exact opposite and set the spacing to negative and force all cubes to collide with each other. The documentation that you might need is how to spawn and despawn a prefab if you want to use the script canvas. For me personally, I prefer Lua scripts. I think it is much more difficult to share your code or your logic with your teammates when you are using script canvas. And to be honest, if you are doing an algorithm with script canvas, it's you are already programming. Hope you managed to get your prototype working. We covered a lot of things today. How to create a cube, how to add physics to it, how to make make it collide with other environments, how to work with script canvas, how to work with Lua scripts, and then how to make procedural generation. Uh, all of this inside the Open3D engine. So that's it for today. I will see you in the next video.